Welcome to Biotrack Sailing. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about sunscreens, what we need to know about our health, our health of our reefs, and I'm going to review some of the best products that I really like at the end of the video. So those of you who follow our channel may know that um, I've spent a good part of my career as a university professor and research neuroscientist, so I'm pretty comfortable reading scientific literature, even outside my field, and I've done my best to read some of the literature on sunscreens, the environment, and our health, and I will present here the most accurate information that I can about how sailors should be looking at sunscreens, not only for their own health, but for the health of our oceans and our coral reefs. Why use sunscreen? Well, we all know that the sun can cause burns. And most of us know that there are different kinds of rays called UVA and UVB because we see that on the label of sunscreens. So UVA is a long range, lower energy um, ultraviolet wave, which can damage the skin. And that's the wave that's responsible for causing aging. So we can think of UVA as UV aging. And UVB, that's a short range, um, high energy wave which is the one that causes sunburn, so UVB, for burning. So we all know that sun isn't all bad and that we can synthesize vitamin D from UVB rays. Vitamin D helps us absorb calcium from the intestines, which is good for our bones. And we get less able to absorb calcium as we age. A lot of scientific research have shown how important its antioxidant ability is for warding off cancer. So it's not a bad thing to have a bit of sun but burning is definitely bad. There are 74,000 new cases of melanoma each year in the United States, and there'll be 10,000 deaths. Melanoma is the worst of the cancers, so the most deadly of the cancers, but there are a number of other types of cancers as well. So protecting from the sun is important. So there are two different types of sunscreens. There's the chemical sunscreens and mineral sunscreens. The chemical sunscreens are the ones that we typically see in pharmacies. In fact, the pharmacy shelves are loaded with them. These are organic chemicals that are absorbed into the skin. By contrast, the mineral sunscreen are not absorbed. They act as a barrier and they reflect the sun. However, some of these chemicals are toxic for humans and other ones are toxic for the reefs. I'm going to sort that out a little bit in this presentation. One of the worst things about the chemical sunscreens is that avobenzone it's also an estrogen-like compound. So not only is it bad for humans to have these estrogen-like compounds, which can be carcinogenic, or they can cause decrease in testosterone in men, but they're bad for reefs as well because they, they alter um, the reproductive cycle of, of the animals in the coral reefs. The two compounds which have been banned because of their adverse effects on coral reefs, which are octalbenzone, and octanoxate, which is also called octal methoxycinamate. This table shows some comparisons between all of the chemicals that can be found in the chemical sunscreens. So the last compound and the third last compound, those are the components in the mineral sunscreen. All of these other compounds are found in many of our chemical sunscreens. This table shows you the amount of ray protection from UVA and UVB with the solid circle being an extensive protection level. So I thought this was a pretty fun graph that um, comes from a paper that I read. The references are down here. And three of the compounds that we've already discussed, the avobenzone, oxybenzone, and the octanoxinate are shown in this graph, as well as two others that we won't look at. So what they're looking at is in cultured cells, percent DNA synthesis. So the lower numbers mean that DNA synthesis has been inhibited and the long concentration of the drug, so the higher numbers or higher concentration of drug. Let's just focus on zero, which is the micromolar concentration. And you can see with avobenzone, it's already decreasing DNA synthesis in these cells. So this is the one that I said gets absorbed, and there are not clear studies to show effects on the body, although it's been shown to have um, estrogen-like properties, and it's also obesogenic, which means that it affects your metabolism pathways and could contribute to obesity. These are the two compounds that are bad for coral reefs. 
And you can see if we look at zero, they're not affecting DNA synthesis. And there's really no evidence that they're bad for humans, but we do know they're bad for coral. So by using a mineral sunscreen, you're going to avoid all three of these compounds. But still, if you're going to be diving near coral reefs and you're not in an area where sunscreens are regulated, please choose a sunscreen without these two compounds. So avobenzone is the most common sunscreen chemical. It's FDA approved as an over-the-counter drug rather than as a cosmetic. And it's approved in concentrations up to 3% in the United States and up to 5% in Europe. Avobenzone has not really been demonstrated to be safe if it gets systemically in our bodies, which it does. There are enormous quantity of these compounds made every year and this is the one component of sunscreen that's likely to give you some annoying side effects, such as making your skin a little red or irritated, or maybe it's okay at the beginning of the day, but when you apply it multiple times, you notice that your skin has this burning sensation. So it is known that when this compound penetrates the skin, it also penetrates into the blood, and it's present systemically. And yet, the systemic effects have not been studied. So there's a movement now to ask the FDA to require companies that are selling sunscreens with this component to do more studies so that we understand what potential toxic effects it might have on humans. The FDA gave limits to systemic exposure, but some of the recent studies have shown that concentrations up to tenfold higher than those limits are found after we apply sunscreen four times a day. Bleaching of coral reefs is caused by global warming. But sunscreen contamination of ocean waters can accelerate the process by as much as 10 degrees of water temperature. Oxybenzone and octinoxinate have been recently banned as of January 2021 in Hawaii, Key West, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And there's actually no data to suggest they're harmful to humans. But there's a lot of data to show that they're harmful to coral reefs. So in particular, they can accelerate chloral bleaching. And you might ask, Sunscreen in oceans, really, can it have an effect? Well, have you seen pictures of crowded beaches or lots of swimmers around coral? But more shocking, extremely small amounts of these compounds can cause bleaching of coral. So as much as one drop in six equivalent of six Olympic swimming pool pools is sufficient to cause coral bleaching. And this has been demonstrated in laboratory studies. So when a bunch of swimmers and go around a popular reef, they're really killing the reef if they're wearing these sunscreens. So the recommendation is to use mineral sunscreens as much as possible. So these are the sunscreens that are formulated with zinc oxide and titanium oxide. They act as a barrier rather than being absorbed. And many of them have nanoparticle formulations, which means they're formulated in a way that they do go on easier and they don't give you that whitish look. So how can you buy these mineral sunscreens? Well, if you just go into a drugstore, you'll find some of them on the shelf of um, where the sunscreens are found, but there are not that many of them. But they will say mineral sunscreen. And then when you look on the back, you will see they either contain zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, or a combination of both. But a lot of drugstores don't carry very many mineral sunscreens. So you're best to go on Amazon to get some of the more specialized ones or look at the cosmetic counter in a drugstore because some of those are there. So I put together this table of the various mineral sunscreens that I've tried. And I put together a rating with a smiley face or a frown of how I found their whiteness factors, the factor that makes your skin look a little chalky. This is my favorite product for the face, Biosans. It goes on very nicely. It's got a very smooth texture when it goes onto your face and it rubs in very easily. So this is a nanoparticle formulation with squalene, which is a plant-based oil uh, used in various cosmetics, but it's very pricey. These two CeraVe sunscreens are available in a drugstore. The smaller one here actually has a tint, and so that helps it uh, to go on nicely and not look so pasty on your face. And this is a sunscreen made in Hawaii. It's got the highest zinc content at 25%. It's going to really work, but it does make you look kind of white. So that's a great one to put on your nose when it's getting burnt, or any area such as your shoulders that could be particularly sensitive to the sun. I tried this sunscreen from MD Solar Sciences, and I thought it was a pretty good sunscreen. I gave it a happy face.
Now, this is a sunscreen that I bought in St. Lucia, which also is zinc oxide only. And it's pretty nice sunscreen, although you do have to really rub it in not to have that uh, chalky look. Sunbomb is a known brand. And uh, this one actually has kind of a nice smell with its co coconut oil. And it's kind of here or there for the pasty look. So maybe better for the body and not so much for the face. So here's a sunscreen that I found in the cosmetic section of a drugstore. It certainly is nice to apply on your face. It doesn't give the pasty look. And I gave it a happy face. So I ordered this from Amazon just to test it, but based on the high zinc concentration with no titanium and not knowing how it's formulated, I've, the jury's out. This is the sunscreen that I used to use. But look at the label. Not all chemical sunscreens are bad. And if you need to spray for those hard to reach places like your back, you're likely going to need to use a chemical sunscreen. But please find a reef friendly one. Here's a spray sunscreen that's reef friendly, good for reaching those places that you can't reach. But do note it has avobenzone. If you can't read the label, don't buy it. The take home message is mineral sunscreens block UVA and UVB. They're reef safe and they're generally very safe for you. Spray sunscreens that are reef safe often have avobenzone because it's effective in blocking UVA. Lastly, there are a number of inexpensive zinc products and even some YouTube videos on how to make your own sunscreen. I'm Lisa McCarricker and I hope this video was informative for both boaters and non boaters alike. Sailors, what's your favorite sunscreen? Please let me know in the comments below.